back to Games Montreal Berries. I know it's been almost two weeks since I made the video, but uh, there's certain circumstances which prevented me from doing so. First of all, I was quite busy uh, during like the first few days of last week. That was actually uh, at the edge of uh, getting a huge cold, kind of flooded off with uh, vitamins and uh, certain medicine. But um, when I went to Toronto, still kind of a bit ill, uh, got much better. But the problem was that uh, in a few days I lost my voice. I guess the cold kind of kicked back and uh, wanted to take what I wanted to take from you, whatever. But I couldn't speak much, so I had to. Uh, even though I had amazing times, a blast, uh, had loads of fun. The weather was perfect. It was nice and warm and sunny, not a drop of rain. So um, we even visited a brew pub, one of the best in Montreal. Uh, sorry, Toronto. Uh, on the best, uh, I firstly I, I didn't have enough memory in my camera at the time, so I, I couldn't have. Uh, filmed a proper review of uh, like on site there. It was an amazing place. Uh, I guess I'll talk about it later. Uh, but I brought a whole, you know, a whole number of interesting beers from there, from Toronto, because they do have a better selection here. And uh, uh, if you stay tuned to the the end of this video, there'll be a little preview I filmed on the day I came back. So you you can you can actually you'll hear my voice how it was um, when I partially lost it. Now for today, the beer is quite different, uh, not that it's not interesting, it's just like I didn't have time to review it before I left there for, for Toronto. So uh, it's Harvest Tunes Bit and Twisted from Scotland. It's 4.2% ABV, so um, quite mild. And uh, Beer Advocate actually describes this as an IPA by a lot of people are telling, even on the side, they're saying this is not an IPA. In fact, this is a blonde ale, blonde uh, beer. And uh, it's certainly supposed to be unique in its own way. And Harrison make a lot of interesting beers. I actually bought another one I'll be reviewing soon. So the black label BNT, so Bit and Twist, has a superb hot profile combining aromatic Halatau Hearthbrooker with spicy Challenger finished by late hopping with steering goldings, giving a sharpness like the twist of lemon. So this is supposed to taste a little bit like the lemon zest or whatever. Uh, my friend actually recommended uh, I try this, he liked it a lot. And uh, there's not much else in the bottle, uh, half litre bottle, kind of chubby, nice, big bottle, brown glass. And uh, let's get reviewing this beer, I'm really excited because I haven't tried this and uh, I want to see what's all about. As I opened the bottle uh, regarding the lovely cap, I'll let you see in a sec. There's a mouse on it, it says Haviston Brewery. Um, the funny thing, oh, that's actually phoning on me. Funny because I was well chilled. Hope I haven't gone skunky in that. But um, I might do another review tonight because uh, I usually do one every Thursday. It's Thursday is like my set day for reviewing because I have I teach guitar once a week, just a small thing I do, and I usually finish about seven and then I have enough time to make a review. But today it got cancelled, so uh, I might stay tuned. Maybe I'll make another one. So it's a very pale kind of body to it kind of murky so it's not like a lager kind of appearance but it is somewhat similar kind of golden color I guess that's why it's called a blonde ale with a touch of uh, slightly orange I guess but more I think it's more golden yellow kind of color than orange nice uh, frothy head and it's about two fingers thick uh, plenty of uh, light bubbles coming up mmm Funny, but it does smell like like an IPA, or like an extra special bit of smell, like nice kind of piney, floral, hoppy uh, aroma. I mean, they use three different varieties of uh, nice hops, so I guess that's where it comes from—a nice blend. Hmm. What else? Yeah, I can definitely uh, smell citrus as well. Not not sure if it's only lemon or maybe a little, little bit of orange, but it's lovely. Maybe some grapefruit. Yes, overall it does smell like an IPA, but it doesn't look like one, that's for sure. Much lighter, more carbonated. So let's give it a try. This is very interesting. It also tastes like an IPA, well, not entirely, but... The way I, the way I think of it, as of now, it's like a mix of um, a lager and an IPA. It's a bit watered down. If, if, you, if you were to perceive this as an IPA, I would say uh, it's 
bit more watery, so it has a light uh, mouthfeel to it. But you still get a robust, nice cake of hops, uh, some bitterness in it. I, I can still though, I can still uh, taste some um, malt in it, the grainy in the finish as it gets bitter. You also get some grainy kind of malty uh, notes in it. Now the lemon starts coming through. Yeah, it definitely develops a lemon kind of characteristic too. Hmm. No, I'm liking this a lot. So uh, it is difficult to classify. Even though uh, the carbonation is visible, I can't really say that uh, it bothers me in terms of mouth feel because uh, the mouth feel is kind of nice. It's very smooth. As I drink more of it, I get more lemon, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm certainly uh, becoming a hop head recently, and uh, this ex entirely is a hoppy beer overall. Like, even though you get some malt, you get some other things going on, but still get that floral kind of touch of pine, maybe hops. Having said all that, this is 4.2 percent. This is amazing because usually IPAs are like six, six and a half. Um, this is probably a good alternative if you want a refreshing kind of drink with the same hoppy characteristic you get in your favorite hop beers, your hop head, and uh, without you know feeling it too much. I'll come back to this so far. This is you know this is impressive. Certainly different. Certainly uh, very unique. I think. Cheers. Well, I'm back and. Uh, you know, in my opinion, this beer, this is like an IPA in disguise. Look, it looks like a lager, just a bit murky in a lager, but it tastes so, it has such a robust, kind of well balanced uh, flavour to it. You get a lot, of, uh, a lot of hops. This is the prevalent big hops. This is not a multi beer, even though you get some buddy malts in the background, but this is less multi than all the bitters and pale ales and anything like that. There's more of an IPA in, in terms of the flavour character it has. Um, you still get a lot of lemon as you drink more of it. At first, didn't really quite taste it, but you also get some other maybe like orange and grapefruit notes. But it's mostly lemon zest yet. Uh, really hits your palate. Um, the mouth feels very smooth as you know the combination is gone by now. You still get a nice uh, li little head going on. Not not much lacing kind of spares. You know, it just well that kind of settles down. But uh, this is such a good alternative, in my opinion, for. Someone you know who is not willing to have a few IPAs because he he can't afford to be uh, too buzzed or anything like that. This is such a drinkable beer. You can have like two pints, not feel too bad about it because it's only 4.2 percent ABV, right? So not like six and a half uh, for like IPAs. That's pretty much under six, six and a half. So uh, taking that in account and uh, wonderful hop tasting, you know, taste profile it has, I will give this a four and a half out of five. Uh, this is an exceptional beer. I'm glad my friend recommended this because I, I was kind of cautious. I saw it in the store, but really uh, didn't really think it was that you know great. But it is. Uh, try it out. Try to find it, and uh, you'll probably won't be disappointed, especially if you're if you're a hop head, and uh, you know you'll probably enjoy this. So that's it for this review. Stay tuned for the bonus materials as promised, and I'll see you soon in the next review. Cheers. Okay, so these are the beers I brought from Toronto. Uh, quite a few actually, <clears throat> quite a few of the ones I really needed to review one time ago. To not just to name a few, Dogfish, 60 minute IPA, a very famous IPA from the States, I haven't tried it yet, just picked up one bottle. Um, Abbott Ale from Green King in uh, England, um, same brewery makes Old Speckle Hand. Uh, Creamer Springs is a pretty good lager from uh, Ontario, which is not sold here in Montreal, so I picked it up. Uh, we've got a Rogue uh, Brutal Bitter, which should be interesting. Another Anchor Brew Liberty Ale, a few German ones, really interesting. Um, a few from Toronto, Amsterdam, Nut Brown Ale, and uh, Mill Street Coffee Porter. 
so uh, it should be very interesting. I have enough stuff to review now. Uh, looking forward to all these reviews.